So, um, guys, in, in five minutes, I'm going to try to give you an update on where we are with the bill. Uh, and also give you an idea of, like Jenny said, why is this such a controversial issue? Um, and I think a good starting point might actually be to discuss and think, why is this important to you? I mean, uh, unless there's people in this room who makes a living from, you know, from singing or from making music or writing books, why is this important to you? Is it important to you? if you're not engaged in the creative industries to make a living? And the answer is an emphatic yes. This bill is important to every single one of us, every single South African, every single person who has South Africa's best interests at heart. Why? Because we're at a very precarious place, aren't we, with our economy. And really, we stand behind our president when, you know, from his sauna address when uh, he, he stated the objectives to bring the country back to where we belong uh, in, in, our, in our place in the world, uh, economically and otherwise. And some of the most important points he raised was we need more jobs, we need more investment, and we need uh, more sustainable FDI. And we actually need to get the economy growing. Now, guess what? The creative sectors presents a fantastic opportunity for us to do that. Uh, if you think I saw recent figures stating that the creative sectors, now when you think of the creative sectors and also the copyright bill and why the copyright bill is important for those sectors is because it really sets the legal framework within which you can do business in those sectors. And those sectors include such a broad and wide variety of, of things. Like for instance, you've got the music industry, you've got the film industry, You've got the publishing industry, book publishing and music publishing. So within industries, there are sub-industries. You've got computer programming, you've got animation. Um, my partner, Phil, uh, sitting at the back there somewhere, mentioned that Triggerfish just won a, there he is, <laughs> uh, an award for animation. It's great news, but guess what? Uh, of our animation SA received a, a letter from an international organization that sends them a lot of work that says if this bill is passed as it is, we're sorry we can't send you more work. So this, um, it's, it's critical that we get it right and it also in, in includes broader uh, sectors like broadcasting, etc. Okay, so it's not just when people think copyright, they often think it's musicians and authors. It goes much, much broader than that. So. The digital age, and sorry, just on investment, I remember I read that uh, our creative sectors employs, I think, a million people of, of, of you know, generating revenues of something like 63 billion rands a year, and also grows at a faster rate than our economy does. Well, that statement might not be very impressive, but it does. So. If we get the legal framework right within which we can invite investment into these sectors, it creates a massive opportunity for South Africa's government, for South Africa's people to take a step in the right direction. And apart from the financial implications of inviting big projects to South Africa, I think everyone in South Africa, you know, when we were watching Black Panther and we were seeing traditional African clothing and designs used, uh, a lot of actors taking part even Isikosa uh, used in, in some of the lines, you know? It's a, it instills a massive sense of national pride. But we, make no mistake, we're actually at, uh, on, the, on the cliff right now. Because if we don't get it right, the investors will look elsewhere. And all of these sectors that have the potential to be world beaters and world best, like I mentioned the animation, that's just one. I expect international film productions to start producing in other countries because it's all about the bottom line. The bottom line and, you know, of the technical skills. So, I've got a whopping one minute and 40 seconds to go. Uh, I think what's very interesting from this process, and me and Kelly have been working this matter for a couple of years uh, now already, uh, since the public, well, since the... Uh, South African Institute of Intellectual Properties Copyright Committee was called upon to prepare submissions on the bill. So basically suggestions on how it can be improved, legally speaking. 
We're not commenting uh, uh, industry neutral. What are the legal issues? Now, when your submissions uh, outnumber the pages of the bill, you, you know you've got a problem, right? And when government does not uh, really listen to any of the suggestions or invite you for real further engagement, that's another problem. So our industries have experienced the same thing. And uh, what government did, which uh, maybe got the attention of everyone in a, in a big way, is when they announced a week before the parliamentary hearings that they've decided to transform our law into a user access oriented system. So everyone thought there will be more rights for performers, for creators, for authors, but meanwhile there's much more leeway for users, including government, and including, nowadays, who's the biggest users? It's actually the uh, government and digital platforms, especially the user upload digital platforms, right? You can go onto some of those platforms and stream music for free. Um, I mean, I read that to make the minimum wage in America, an American artist needs to stream his song over 2.2 million times in that month. Now, you'd think a person like that would be wealthy but they're not. They're living under the bread line. So my time is up. Uh, I'm just going to, in 30 seconds, give you a rundown of very interesting things that have happened. Uh, the, uh, the bill is on the president's desk for signature. We're waiting for his decision. He can, uh, and, but in the lead up, you know, the opposition against the bill, it's been so interesting to see what industry have done. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, Google the song Vike La Mina. Uh, V-I-K-E-L-A, Vikela Mina, meaning protect me, like prominent artists like uh, Cuesta and Z uh, Zolani Mahole, La Mola, uh, Freshly Ground, etc., created the song, beautiful song, in a protest song against the bull. Uh, musicians have formed a trade union, Tumsa, have marched on parliament twice to deliver letters to the president, and our industries have gotten together and formed what's called the Coalition for Effective Copyright for the first time in the world. And that's what I love about South Africa and South Africans. We find a way to be innovative. For the first time in the world, our publishing, our film sectors, our music sectors, industries, all of them have stood side by side and said, okay, despite our differences commercially, we've got a common goal, and that is to create uh, an environment where we can achieve the best investment and creative industry for everyone. Uh, the biggest, I'm going to leave you with a quick quote from John Carney which is going to the president today. He actually uh, sent it to me last night. Um, and uh, it's part of a letter going to the president. And uh, it goes as follows. Don't worry, it's a very brief one. If I don't run over time, I'd just be disappointed in myself. I always do. <laughs> so John delivers this much better than me. He actually delivered this, this comment at a recent seminar that we hosted. Some of you might have been there. But he said, the prob this is a problem that the bill has created. It has further compounded what was not simple in the beginning. What makes me go back to my own little space, my own little shell, and only care for me? I'm afraid to write. I'm afraid to sing. I'm afraid to create because I don't know what's going to happen with it. Some of us now are now considering publishing our works abroad where our copyright and IP can be well protected. The issue of commissioned works and the so-called fair use, which Kelly will speak about now, uh, has left creators in a worse off position than before. This has left us with no recourse nor protection from legalized piracy. So don't take it from a copyright lawyer like me, who don't like the bill, uh, and we're not shooting the bill down. We're saying that it needs to be amended. It needs to be sent back to Parliament for critical amendments to be done because we have to get it right. We, our economy simply cannot afford uh, another setback. So now I'd like to introduce my partner, Kelly Thompson, who's in our litigation unit and copyright expert. As mentioned, the, uh, the, the acting chair of the Copyright Committee of CIPOL at the time that, the, that we made submissions and went to present to Parliament on the issues. Um, over to you, Kelly. Thanks. I think I'm on, so I don't need that. Um, I sh Stephen, I share your pain. It's a very short amount of time to speak about. There are a lot of issues. So what I've decided to do is really just focus on the one issue that I think has received a lot of media attention. It's certainly, even this week, was still in the press, and that's the issue of fair use. Now, what is 
fair use. Fair use is essentially an ex exception to copyright infringement. Currently in our Copyright Act, we have what is called fair dealing. It sounds like the same thing, right? Um, but it's not. So fair dealing uh, sets out the exact ways in which you can use a copyright work without infringing copyright. So some examples are using it as an illustration for teaching or if you are testing sound equipment or demonstrating a TV, for example, you won't infringe copyright by playing a song or showing a DVD through a DVD player in game or macro or wherever you might be. And they're generally very sensible. Do they need updating and widening? Absolutely. But what fair use is essentially is just gives the court a set of guidelines as to what they might consider in determining if something is copyright infringement. And essentially, they've, and this is a US-based concept, by the way, that, that essentially people want to sort of just import into our law. And these guidelines are really for the court to look at what the purpose of the work is, what the nature of the copyright work is, what type of work it is, the amount and the substantiality of the portion that's taken, so how much copying is there, and then the effect of the use upon the potential market. Now, these all sound like very reasonable factors to take into account. The difficulty with it is it requires a court to look at it and a judge to look at it, and a judge is given a wide discretion as to what factors he or she might take into account in deciding, is this fair use of a work? It means that there has to be litigation first, before you're actually going to know, am I infringing copyright or is somebody else infringing my copyright? It's a defense that can be raised that is very wide and open-ended. We have absolutely no case law in South Africa dealing with fair use. There's a wealth of case law in the US, but as we all know, the US legal system is very different from ours. Um, and one of those major differences is the ability to claim these exorbitant amount of damages in the US. We don't have that in South Africa. Um, and what that means is in the US, you, if you've got a good case or something that looks like it's a good case, you can get yourself a good lawyer because they'll be prepared to take on the case and earn themselves some money. In South Africa, your damages are limited to what you can actually prove you've lost or maybe a reasonable royalty that a licensee would have paid. And that amount is so small that we almost never see damages claims in copyright cases. So that's a major difference. That's just one difference where we feel that fair use will not work in our law. I don't have a countdown clock, so I'm here forever. <laughs> Jenny, I'm going to rely on you to give me a, a warning. Um, I think maybe what I can, can turn to now is an example which I think demonstrates the complexities around the defense of fair use and how very difficult it will be to decide upfront, is this a fair use scenario or is it not? And bear in mind, lawyers generally uh, get a bad rap for this, but we actually do like to be able to advise our clients with certainty. We don't just want to litigate. We want to know, we're we going to court, do we have a reasonable chance of winning or not? Because actually we don't like walking out of that courtroom having lost our clients a whole lot of money. So. We actually prefer the, the certainty, um, and yes, there will be a lot of litigation, I think, that will arise out of this bill if it happens, but we don't actually want all of that. So, for example, um, some of you may have read about this in the press, it happened about this time last year, um, and what happened was uh, a US artist by the name of Hank Willis Thomas took this iconic photograph, which is a South African uh, photographer, Graham Williams, um, and he did this to it. And the first that Graham Williams knew about this was when he walked into the Johannesburg Art Fair and saw this image, which was being sold for 36,000 US dollars. Um, he says he never made more than about $1,200 out of his original photograph. Um, and what Willis Thomas had essentially done is really removed a lot of the color. Um, he had made it black and white and then faded um, the, the SAPS. It's a, an image that was taken in 1990 at an ANC rally. The children were sort of taunting the policemen. It was obviously a very turbulent time in South Africa. Um, and Willis Thomas was using this, and this is what he does. This is a type of art that he creates. He transforms existing works or he takes advertising or existing works makes changes to them that then make a statement. And he wants his, the people who view his artworks to be engaged. In fact, his intention with this was that if you took your, photo, your phone and you used the flash, you would then see the image sort of appearing. Um, but he wanted to highlight or give prominence to the children in the foreground. 
And one of his comments on that was that he feels that uh, documentaries and photographs such as this are often taken without any sort of compensation being given to the people who are in it and without it actually really benefiting them. Needless to say, there was an absolute media storm. Um, my time is up, so I'm going to have to really cut it, cut it short. Um, but there were so many issues that came in because in the US, under the fair use doctrine, a transformative work does not infringe. So if you transform it and there's a new meaning ascribed to it, which is exactly what Willis Thomas said he was doing, it would not be infringing. In South Africa, because our act has not yet been amended, we have no such equivalent um, at all. I cannot comment on this, on my personal feelings, because we did act for one of the parties. Um, I won't say who, because I don't know how you're, you feel, and I might get eggs thrown at me. Uh, <laughs> but um, ultimately, I am glad to say the matter was settled. But uh, it just demonstrates, of course, there were issues about this is uh, appropriation. It's, it was likened to land expropriation without compensation. Um, thrown into the mix was the fact that Willis Thomas, the American artist, was actually black and the local photographer was white. So this made it slightly complicated and, and there were those issues. A lot of emotional articles written at the time. Do yourself a favor and, and go and read some of them. It's a very interesting. But I think this just demonstrates what we will probably land up with if we end up with fair use. Right.